This video deals with a type of wire break that's called central bursting. Why central bursting? It occurs in the center of the wire and when it breaks, it bursts in a very brittle manner. One end of the break has a cup or a hole in it. The other end of the break has a cone in it. And people call it different names. Cuppy wire, cones, hollow wire. It's a very controversial type of a wire break because it's considered to be dye related. But actually, a lot of the material defects can exacerbate this particular type of defect. This is a cross section of the wire, a longitudinal direction that took place in the direction of wire drawing. As you can see, the cone end points in the direction of wire drawing. The other end points in the opposite direction, the cup end. That's the end that has a hole in it that looks like a cup. The cause is poor dye geometry. Basically, too small a reduction in area in the dye or too large a dye angle. So it is related to the dye. But look at some of the corrections. Improved lubricity. Well, that's really a drawing related issue, a lubricant related issue. Replacing the one dye makes sense because if you leave the dye in service too long, it's going to wear and it's possible you may get a small reduction in area. Sound of casting. That means that if you've got some defects in the cast bar and it's carried over to the rod and carried over to the wire, it might make this process occur more easily. Smaller die angle, that makes sense if the die angle is too large for that particular material that you're drawing. And of course, improving the drawing practice is related to improved lubricity. Many years ago, people have calculated the cause of this problem. And they found that if you have too large a die angle and too small a reduction in area, you get extremely high tensile stresses in the center of the wire, and that may cause a crack. And the crack begins and nucleates in the center of the wire. Then when the stresses are greatest on the shear plane, that's a 45 degree plane and 45 degrees in three dimension becomes the surface of a cone. So that's what happens. Now, the people who have made these calculations mathematically have shown that in this region over here, which is called central bursting, that's where that problem is likely to occur, but it also depends on the coefficient of friction or the lubrication. Where you are on this curve, is a function of what your material is that you are drawing. Steel might be a lower die angle, copper might be a high die angle. It doesn't really matter. If you're drawing properly, you want to be at a region just above the curve. The lower curve has to do with a low coefficient of friction. If now there's a drawing related problem, you're on the upper curve and you become in that region which is called central bursting and defects are likely to start and occur. This happens to be the cross section of a wire that is just beginning to form this problem of central bursting. Right at the beginning, it was a crack and now it's starting to get bigger. And you can see a crack is starting to form on a 45 degree angle and you can see that a cone end is starting to form. Now, why is macro porosity related? Well, those holes that form due to a casting related problem usually occur at the center of the wire. So if there's a hole there, it doesn't mean that you have to create a crack. That hole serves as a basis of a crack. So therefore, any casting related defects will make this problem occur much more likely to take place. Now, it turns out that once this starts, you don't get a wire break immediately. This crack over here on a 45 degree plane might take a large number of dies before it breaks into two parts. Ductile materials like copper and aluminum, it might take as much as a dozen dies before that crack becomes big enough that it breaks into two. A hard material, that crack can propagate more easily and it might only take a few dies before that breaks into two pieces. Now here's an example of the cone end 
of a Brill cup and cone break. You can see the cone is here, but inside there's a void. That happens to be that macro porosity that I was talking about. And so the material defect, that casting defect, is what caused this particular crack to form at the center of the wire. This happens to be data that was obtained for copper. It's the amount of samples that will break in this brittle manner will increase as the oxygen content increases. That does not mean, and it's very important, it does not mean that oxygen is the cause of the break. But what it means, if the conditions are right for brittle cup and comb breaks to take place, high oxygen content increases the strength of the copper and it makes the cracks form much more easily and it's more likely to take place. Now here's a cross section of the wire and it looks like it's a controversial type of picture that I'm talking about. Over here in the center of the wire, the cone end is pointing in the direction of wire drawing. But right next to it, the cone is pointing in the opposite direction. And this is quite common. So we have to explain why the cones can point in both directions. And that's shown in the next slide, which is a schematic illustration of how this particular type of defect can occur in both directions. The upper curves over here represents what might take place in the initial wire drawing machine, let's say the rod breakdown machine. If the conditions are right in terms of diagonal reduction, a crack will form in the center of the wire and it will propagate and get bigger. If the break occurs in that particular machine, the cone end will now be pointing in a direction of wire drawing, and that would be the end of the wire break that's left in the machine. The other end, which gets through the machine, will have the cup end. Now, supposing that particular case over here represents the process wire as it exits the rod breakdown machine. If this sample now goes to the next drawing machine, the direction of wire drawing is reversed. So now we're starting with this particular condition over here. As this wire is drawn, the cracks get bigger, and if it eventually breaks now, now the cup end is pointing in the direction of wire drawing. That's the end of the break that's left in the machine, and the cone end goes through the machine, and that's the other end that very often is not recovered. Now let's take this particular case over here. This is the process wire that's now in a secondary machine. The crack is getting bigger, but let's assume there's something wrong in the drawing lubricant in a secondary machine. So this is the condition now where we have cones pointing in both directions, just like that photograph that I showed earlier. So it's possible now that the cup end will be the end of the break that's left in the machine, and the other end will be the cone end, but with the cones pointing in both directions. It's very, very easy to get this type of a wire break confused with a different type of a wire break. For example, this is both ends of a break that's caused by macro porosity. Macro porosity is a ductile type of a wire break which is caused by a void or casting related defect in the center of the wire. Both ends of the wire break have a hole in it. This end looks very much almost identical like the cup end of a cup and cone break. And so therefore, in order to make sure you don't get the two type of wire breaks mixed up, you really should look at the other end of the break. If the other end of the break has a hole, you know it's a casting related defect. If the other end of the break has a cone, then you know it's a brittle cup and cone type of wire break. Thank you. Now let's review some key points from the video.